One of the things that's different and new in Windows 7 is the way the taskbar works at the bottom of the screen and displays previews and so on. And I just want to show you here how easy it is to program that using Visual Studio 2010 Beta 2 and .NET Framework 4 Beta 2. So a couple of ideas. Uh, one is if you're doing something like uh, displaying Media Player, so here's Media Player, and you can see that Media Player displays custom buttons on its preview at the bottom of the screen. We'll take a look at how you can do that. Note also if we're looking at something like Messenger, then Messenger displays a little icon here in red, a little overlay that reflects my current status just to indicate to me am I available or am I busy and you get that little red or green uh, display down at the bottom of the screen. The other thing that you're probably familiar with, if you copy a big file, so let's take this uh, virtual hard drive here and copy it, and we paste it down here. I don't really want to do this, but let's do it anyway. You'll see that you get a little progress indicator over the um, icon down in the bottom of the taskbar to show you how that's actually going, and that's another thing you can do with your own, your own stuff. So let's cancel that, because I don't actually want to copy that 45 gig hard drive. OK, so let's run into Visual Studio and see how this stuff works. OK, so I'm here in Visual Studio 2010 Beta 2. I'm going to make a new project in here. I'm going to use the Windows Presentation Foundation using .NET Framework version 4.0 Beta 2. So I'm using Framework 4 WPF, let's call this um, Taskbar App, something like that. We'll create a new project. OK, so here's my new project. I'm just going to add a couple of images to it. Let's just go here. Let's add a new folder. I'll call this uh, Images. And let's just go into that Images folder and add some existing PNG files from my desktop. So I'm just going to go to my desktop. There's a bunch of PNGs on here with images for back, forward, pause, and play. And let's add those in. I'm just going to make sure that the build system does the right thing with them as building them as a resource, which is fine. That's great. OK, so let's go to our window here. And on a window in .NET Framework 4, you've got a new property to set, window.taskbarItemInfo. So this is the stuff that's going to go down onto the taskbar. OK, so in there, let's create a taskbarItemInfo. There's a bunch of things we can set on that. For the moment, we'll just set a description. Let's call it My App, something like that. And then within there, we can specify buttons, so thumb button infos. These are going to be the buttons that display on the preview window. So let's put three in here right now. Let's have a task, sorry, a thumb button info. And I'm going to set its image source to be, let's have images slash, uh, let's go back.png. And then let's have another one. Let's say image source equals um, images pause.png. And let's have another one. Let's say thumb button info image source equals images slash forward.png. I just stole these images by stealing them from a media player. And let's put little click handlers on the back and forward ones. So let's say click equals, just have an event handler on that. Let's say click equals another event handler on that one. Not perhaps the best way of doing things, but not to worry too much. Let's jump into the code behind. And when you click that back button, what we'll do is we'll grab hold of the taskbar item info here. So I'm just going to name it, let's say, my info, so we can program against it. Let's say my info dot progress state. So if you remember the progress states on the taskbar, let's say that equals uh, normal. And let's say my info dot progress value. This is a value between 0 and 1, I think. So let's just say minus equals 0.1 at that point. We should probably check to see if it's bigger than 0, but let's cheat. Similarly, when you press forward, let's increase that forward state by 0.1. Let's press a 5, see where we've got to. OK, so down here on the taskbar, when we preview, we've got our custom buttons. And if we forward this, you can see the progress indicator is moving forward like that, and obviously backward like that as well. So it's very easy to build that sort of progress indication into your application. There's kind of nothing to it, really. We can also have different states. So maybe on this pause button here, let's just go and affect that for a second. So let's just go back to our definition and give that an event handler as well. Let's just say click equals. By the way, these don't have to be event handlers. You can do this in a nicer way. But let's go and put an event handler on there. And perhaps what we'll do is we'll say if my info.progress state is equal to uh, normal, then we'll say my info.progress state equals to paused else, let's set it to normal. OK, so we're just flicking that backwards and forwards. So what we should see now is as we hover over, we move it along a little bit, 
pause now would set that to a yellow state because that's the pause state. So you can see we've got different ways of reflecting what's actually going on in the application. Now we switch it back to normal, now we switch it back to pause. You get the idea. Uh, switch it back to normal again and move it along. Okay, so you get the idea as to how that works. Now when the application's in the pause state, much like uh, Messenger does when it displays its little red uh, overlay down here, or green overlay depending on your status of course, um, what would be nice to do is if we could display our own overlay and our, if we just go back to our XAML, our taskbar item info also has an overlay on it. So we could change that from code, we could say my info dot overlay. So this is the state when we are going uh, paused. So do we want to use the paused um, PNG for that? So let's just set this to an image. And we we'll just give that a URI. I just uh, paste in the URI for that. That's just linking to that pause image that we've got. That should be kind of OK. And then when you switch back, we'd want to display a play image. So let's just go ahead and display a play image. Let's try that. Press F5. So now, as the application goes paused, we should see there's the little overlay down there. It looks like it's the wrong one. And we, as we go the other way, there's pause. But you get the idea as we're displaying the overlay. Maybe I reversed the logic there. It doesn't really matter. But you get the idea as to how that's being displayed as an overlay down there. It doesn't have to be a picture you display. You can use some WPF-based graphics in that little uh, overlay down there as well. But you can see how that's working out as we do that stuff down there. Now, I won't fix that bug, but once we run the application, essentially when we mouse over it and get the preview, what's being displayed in the preview window is the whole of the window for the application. So my application is just a big white square, so what you get is a big white square down there. But we can change that if we wanted to. If there was something we wanted to highlight from the application rather than displaying the whole window, then we could do that. So let me just put some content into my window so that we can see something in the first place. OK, so let's go back to our XAML. And instead of this grid, I'm just going to paste in a uniform grid. So that's a uniform grid called Layout Root. And I've added four buttons to that, button 1, button 2, button 3, and button 4. And they all call this event handler button click. So let's just make sure we have that uh, in place by forcing Visual Studio to put that in place. OK, so here's button click. Now what I want to do, just to run up the content right now, so at the moment when you look at the preview, it shows the whole window. What if I want to make it such that it focuses on the button that you last clicked? So what we'll do is we'll grab in here, let's just write a little piece of code. We'll say button, say button equals button of uh, sender. What I want to do is transform that to the grid that is its parent. So let's say general transform. Let's call that T or trans equals, let's say button dot transform to ancestor and the ancestor is the grid layout root. And then let's get a point for where that is within that uh, grid. So we'll just say transform dot transform of zero zero. So that tells me where that um, button is within its parent grid. What I now want to do is go back to my. Let's just go back to our XAML and remember what we've got in here. We have our taskbar item info called my info, and what we want to say is my info dot thumbnail clip margin is a new thickness. And this thickness needs the border around the bit that you want to actually display. So what we'll say is the left hand side of that is point dot x, the right hand side of that, sorry, the top of that is point dot y. The right hand width of that is going to be uh, essentially layout root dot actual width minus button dot actual width minus point dot x. And the height of it is going to be layout root actual height minus button dot actual height minus point dot y. So the important thing here really is not about any of this stuff other than this property and the fact that we can set it this way. Let's just change that to point. Let's press F5. And so what we're hoping now is that when we click button 1 that becomes the focus of the preview window. When we click button 2 same deal. When we click button 4 let's just let it pop down. Same deal. When we click button 3 same deal. So we've managed to control which part of our window, and it has to be a part of the visible window, is displayed as the thumbnail preview. One further thing to think about is that the WPF support doesn't give you the ability to do what IE does with multiple tabs like this. If you need that, then take a look at the Windows API code pack.